still good morning. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I haven't done a PowerPoint presentation. I'm, I'm just going to speak um, on the role of um, my work that I do within the inter international community. Um, what I'd like to say first of all is for the, the students that are present, um, I'm, I'm going to talk about highlight, highlighting the links between what I did as a serving police officer, everything I did in, in the Staffordshire Police. Um, when I retired at the end of 2000 and went to work uh, in international development, where I'm still working, it was all on the foundation of my own work in the UK and taking that input, that, that basic strong uh, knowledge of UK policing is only the foundation, but it's the <coughs> transferable skills that I was able to implement once I got there. Um, and so the, the conflict-affected environments um, which I work in, my knowledge and my skill to be able to work with confidence in those areas are through um, the skills and the knowledge that bit by bit, or during my 33 years, I was able to pick up, absorb, and then look at the culture and the context of the host country that I was now working in. Um, my own background was when I started out in the UK police, it was just the police women's department. Women were not allowed to undertake any of the roles uh, that the men traditionally did, and the men could not, because uh, it was equally discriminatory for the men, because they couldn't do what we were trained to do. And so, so when I went, first of all, from staffs to Africa, and the women were still more or less clerks, it didn't bother me. It didn't say, I've got to do something about this now. Because I knew that bit by bit by bit, it would change. And that's where I am now. My last uh, major role was in Liberia and I'll spend some time talking about that. But there, I was as the uh, project manager uh, for improving the training of the Liberian National Police. Uh, but there's another thing I think that I should mention on partnership working. Because when we were in the police women's department, which was abandoned, by the way, in 1975, so I really am going back, there were no social services. Um, we, there were the police, the children's department, the elderly uh, people, and also the vulnerable, usually the mental health. Um, and so we all worked together, and we used to have regular meetings where we coordinated what we did. When the female police were then integrated into the male police, and the social services were developed at the same time, there was just two years between the two. Social services... Um, incorporated all of their um, social aspects in 1973, and then we came along in 1975. Um, oh, for a long time, they are still worried, I think, about women going out and doing normal police work, what we all do, we don't even think about it now. <coughs> um, but, so, they tried to put us into, um, I did a lot of work in court liaison, reading evidence, reading files, then working with the courts, uh, working with probation, deciding we've got this case here, and um, we've got the, the mother is not, is not working, father's ill, and uh, the children are stealing, what are we going to do with them? It wasn't just a matter as uh, guilty of theft, it was last name one point, guilty of theft, um, we've made all the elements, they're going to go to court. Well, you needed to do a little bit more background information, and that was court liaison. And, and I also set up what I call my Naughty Boys Club. That wasn't discriminatory, but it was mainly boys. Um, and with those, 
And that was because I was listening, I was dealing with the shoplifters, and I said to, there's a female example, and I said to one of the ladies, why have you stolen? It was just a packet of fish and chips, frozen fish and chips. And um, she said, well, my mum won't buy me them. And it's just something as simple as that. And then the boy, he'd stolen a football. Why have you stolen a football? Well, we know why. Because I want to play football and my mum can't afford it. And so with that, I set up this little group where uh, we used to, I, I tried to introduce the children to anything, the offenders, that wouldn't cost them any money. And so, and so we, we did walks, um, I went round, uh, where I live, it's pretty rural as well in the areas, so I went to the horse riding stables, and I got the children to have free horse riding, which on one hand it might have not been a good idea because they used to ride anybody's horse there, uh, but on the other side, they, they could, we, I used to ask them to, to the people who were supervising them, make sure they do the leather work, make sure they learn about how to brush down the horse, make sure they look after the horse. It's not just a free bait. They've got to come away with something else. And then, um, when the integration became big time, they decided to put me into training. And so I taught every aspect, apart from the specialists. I didn't teach firearms uh, or, or driving motor vehicles. But I would teach the law relating to everything. And, and that's where I worked there. Um, with regard, regards of gender, I still had to keep um, a portfolio of watching the women. And I know Zainab Bangura has done a tremendous job with UN Women. Um, but I was working with trying to do a bit more for women in the service. Again, thinking, what can you do and how can we get you operational? Uh, women in management. They weren't passing their exams, so we put on examination courses for them. Um, and women in the refugee camps, you know, which put me into what I was doing with those. Now, I, I've probably spent a little bit too much time saying about the transferable skills, what can be done, what can't be done, and how it can be done. However, um, when I went um, to Sierra Leone first, I, I used to ask people as well, but my job was strategic planning advisor. And so the, I had to look at the law to make, because I worked with Keith Biddle, who was the, um, the, the UK um, chief police officer there. And he was saying, well, this is wrong. You need to look at the law. Can you have a look at this? Can you have a look at the tenancy agreement, the moaning about the complaints in the barracks where they all lived? Uh, look at the tenancy agreements. And, and so... I mentioned that because that was really causing the women in the barracks anxiety. Um, and, uh, and so I, I discovered that I could research an issue, research a subject, write it down, and make feasible recommendations. But well, how I did the recommendations was to go to all the partners. Because uh, uh, with the UK police, it just tends to be the police authorities, the local authorities, and then the Home Office or the um, whoever uh, passing down the, um, the policies and how they want them implemented. But what I needed to do was actually find out whether what their law was like, what their substance was like, whether I could implement change, whether it, did it just say, well, it would be a good idea if you were to do this? Well, so therefore, I had to look at the legislation. And, it, it, and there was nobody in the country who could draft the legislation. You know, if you want a legislation change, it has to be done. So I, at some point, I was writing the legislation. I would work with the legal advisors, and I would have thorough knowledge of the legal system. But it was me drafting the legislation that finally went before Parliament. But at one time, Parliament wasn't working. So if you want to put a change in that needs a legal foundation, you have to look at the strength of the Parliament. And so from, from the implementation of the legislation, 
Then I had to implement the policy, how it would work, who would be responsible for it, who would monitor it. And so again, it's bringing it down to, in country, have you got the capacity for anyone else to write the policy? If not, can I teach them? Am I teaching the right person? Are we covering the aspects that relative to their law, as opposed to, um, not my law, their law? Again, the transferable skills. I've worked um, a lot with the different international police associations, and I'd learned about the different police styles. And so I used to, again, look at the different police styles for, a court, for that function that needed to be reformed. And one of them um, was, when I arrived in Liberia, the Chief Constable, the Inspector General of Police, said to me, the problem we've got is the manuals aren't written right. We can't investigate. We're, not, we're getting no cases through a court. Working with my UN partners, who were already working in training, um, and other people, they said to me, there's nothing wrong with the manuals. So I took a bundle of home with me at night, and I sat and read them, and everything in the manuals was spot on according to my theory law. There was nothing out of place. Whoever had researched the training program for the standardized investigation manual at all levels of community crime, working it all the way up, um, they got it right. Another problem was the, the majority of the general police in Liberia at the time were highly illiterate. Uh, very few of the um, senior police officers who were Liberians were actually um, could read and write in English. And so again, most of the, the UN partners would be in there, or as with the Inspector General of Police, they recall him uh, Liberian citizens or Liberian uh, natives who were US citizens, and they would come in. So they were brought in at the higher rank. So they could read and write, but many of those were not, did not understand policing. So I've got two dichotomies. I've got one where the police officers who understood what to do were illiterate and couldn't read what should be done. And then I've got the ones who knew the law but didn't understand the policy and the practice and how to implement uh, the policing side of it. So the problem I went there, or I went the Inspector General's problem was, in the last four years of figures, of 2,000 arrests that the Liberian police had dealt with, less than 10, in fact, it was seven cases were successful at court. Now, when you start looking at justice and the rule of law and um, letting go through the process rather than taking it into your own uh, hands, that was really important. So I used to walk around and ask people, what is wrong? I sat in the back of the court to find out what was wrong. I discovered that many of the offenders didn't turn up. They'd been arrested and bailed. They didn't turn up to court. Um, I discovered that there were more prisoners on remand than sentenced prisoners in the state prison. And so bit by bit, I thought the only way is, is to sit there and I mapped every single action from offence, arrest, report writing, through into um, subsequent appearance at court. But to do it, I sat down with the officers who arrested. What do you do? How do you do it? When do you do it? What happens? And bit by bit by bit, through sitting in the back of the court and finding that people weren't turning up, or there'd be no liaison with the court. They weren't on the list. And so then I discovered that the legal system that had been introduced under an earlier reform program 
was based on the English common law, whereas Liberia was based on the English-American common law, which means the public defender is crucial. That person needs to be consulted sometimes before arrest, always before charge, always before court, and always before sentence. Those four areas were omitted totally, which <coughs> led to why only seven people were finally sentenced and uh, in, out of 2000. So I said, they told me, they were working on a system called court liaison. There was one court liaison person at police headquarters and there was nine major police stations in the city. And so I said, well, where is your liaison? Well, that's the public defender. Oh, it was simple. In the American parlance, it would be from the DA's office, the district attorney's office. And so I then worked, went to the prosecution task force that had been set up to sort out these problems and so bit by bit, I could ask everybody what they did, what they recommended should be done, and how it could be implemented. And so the people who were skilled at the American system, the court system, with the role of the public defender, um, would work through the process. I also discovered that the de public defender was there. There was an office of the public defender there was a public defender, but nobody ever told the public defender or their office that there was a case at court and that he needed to be in court. It wasn't that. Now, um, when I said, well, why does it, because again, at that time, I wasn't totally familiar with that system, well, why does he need to be in court? Can't, as in the UK system, a friend, can't they appear? Can't they represent this um, offender? I said, no. They're not allowed to turn up a, a person, <coughs> regardless of the offence, when they turn up a court, unless the public defender is in court, they cannot, um, the case can't be heard, unless there's been a consultation um, with this impartial person. Uh, it stops at all of the different stages. And, and so that's where, um, that's my final hour of, A, identifying the problem and who the actors were that needed to be sp spoken to, to implement it. But I then had to do 12 mapping, I use the term. I did 12 flowcharts mapping all of the crucial persons within the criminal justice system so it all worked and it all um, interconnected but it was a, a long job but at the end of the day we were starting to get a court system that was running efficiently. Now I'm not saying that I did anything special but as, as I started to say to the students it's your transferable skills just keep asking if you're at home why doesn't this work? You'd, you'd take it to bits and you'd find it out. And then you'd start to say, well, I'm going to have to do this, so you're going to plot your way through. And, and that's how I work. And so for, for if any of you want to go and work in the international community, there's no magic. There's policy. There's policy in lots of different jobs that we have to learn. But the main thing is be confident in your own ability. Know what you know. And when you're doing your research, think about the same, just the track. What, what did you need, do, need to do your research? You, you would have looked at the foundation, what was known, what was unknown. How did you go from the known to the unknown? And then work it the same way. And that's exactly what I was doing, a strategic planner and, and policy work and project managing and monitoring it. You know, go back, what are your targets? Have you achieved your targets? What was stopping them? So it, hopefully, I mean, I've been slowly talking my way through it, 
hopefully that you will, um, of being thoroughly com confident in your own ability to look at your skills and make them work in the international community. There was something as well that we've been talking about this morning, and that was how the police started to work um, in international development um, with the military. Well, when I was a young policewoman, we used to have things called MACP, Military Aid to Civil Power. What I would like to say is, when we had the floods in January and February, it's, it was the, the military who came in to support the police. But for that to happen, there would have been um, legal documentation to take place. I don't know how Prince Charles, Prince uh, William and Prince Harry got on, uh, because they went in as well. Um, but in, in those days, it was military aid to civil power, and it used to have to sign over uh, that the army can now come in. With international development, we've almost gone, and perhaps the, the academics amongst yourselves, uh, we've almost gone to, well, yes, we're now finished with the, the peacekeeping. We're now moving on to the, the, the next stage of where we need the police in to do the police building. But the foundation is already there. And so we've got two aspects. We've got now in a modern police state, police society, police, uh, we've got military aid to civil power, whereas what we were doing was the police were going in on, under the reverse. So I think um, if there's any questions. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you.